Hello fantastic creatures, I'm Fantasims and welcome to my channel. In today's video I'm going to show you how I made these very ethereal elven styled arches. Okay, now before we get into the speed build of how I actually made all of these arches, I'm going to show you how I first rotate objects into wheels as a sort of mini tutorial before the speed build, just so that it's a lot clearer how I do it. Also, you'll see at the beginning of the speed build footage, me doing it a completely different way than I do it now, and that's because I was using the first version of the tool mod, and a lot has changed with this incredible mod made by Twisted Mexi, and the great thing about the mod is you don't have to have the mod installed in order to download these creations. So in the speed build I won't show you how I made these arches because I had already made them but I'll show you here basically how they were constructed. Now in the past when I used to make these wheels I would line up 36 objects and I would do a straight version and then I would do an angled version so 36 for each of those versions and then I would individually rotate them by 10 degrees but now the tool mod has a feature where you can toggle select and do multiple things at once so I'm going to show you the new and improved way that I rotate objects. So these ethereal looking elven arches are actually made predominantly with this baby bassinet from Realm of Magic. I just decided one day to just rotate a bunch of objects and when I rotated it into a wheel, it created these like swan wings and I just thought that they looked really ethereal so I thought they would be perfect for an elven arch. All right, now if we go over into live mode, you have to be in live mode to use the mod, the tool mod. We're gonna select tool and I'm gonna elevate the object. Usually I do it around two so that when it rotates in a circle there's enough room underneath that it doesn't clip into the floor and I just shift click on it tool toggle active object then I hold down the shift and the alt key and I'm gonna click it eight times one two three four five six seven eight and then I will shift click and I will rotate and that's actually the perfect angle that I want that's the axis I want and I'll do ten Twenty, shift click tool, rotate, thirty, shift click tool, rotate, forty. And this used to take a really long time when I used to do thirty-six pieces. Sorry, where were we? Ten, twenty, thirty, forty, fifty. This is why I shouldn't talk while I'm counting. Then we're gonna do sixty, rotate, seventy. And the last one we'll do is eighty. There's the reason I used to do 36 is because there's 360 degrees in a full circle and since I rotate each one by 10 degrees that's 36 individual pieces. Now I've just done a almost 90 degree angle. If I had done one at 90 it would complete that perfect 90 degree angle, the quarter of a pie shape. The reason I don't do the 90 degrees is because I'm about to rotate all of these together and this will end up being down here where the 90 degree angle would be. I know that probably doesn't make sense. So what I do is I tool toggle active object, hold the alt key down and then click on all of these pieces, the fabric part disappears, but that's fine. Actually, I forgot, the, I forgot this next step that I do. I go over into build mode and I just use one of these platforms and I put the floor down like that and then I copy it, I copy it and I'm gonna move it over here and then I jump back over into live mode and I'm gonna rotate all of these pieces by 90 degrees. And I'm going to keep them green because that makes it a lot easier. They're all selected for next time I jump in and out of live mode. And I'm going to jump back into build mode, copy this again. And sometimes what I like to do is I like to line them up so that there's like four of these in the stages of them being rotated because sometimes when you put it all together in a wheel, it's kind of hard to tell what you can do with the objects. So I like to save them in like a row, but for the sake of this video, I'll just show you how I put them on top of each other to create a wheel. Then we're going to go back over into live mode and I'm going to shift click tool, rotate another 90 degrees, back into build mode, copy, and just ignore this. I found that um, lately because the game has been so glitchy for me in build mode, building on a park lot doesn't load as many items when you jump in and out of build and, and live mode. So for me, I've just found it a lot easier. And then last time jumping over into live mode, gonna rotate another 90 degrees. And this time I don't need to keep all the items green, but I am right now because I'll show you what else you can do. Back over into build mode and we are going to move this room over. And now look, you've got a circle. And you might be asking, yes, but why would I want circles and circles of rotated objects? Well, I will show you. So these are rotated in this way. 
but also see how it kind of curves in this way it would be nice to have something curve in the other way which is essentially what I did for these shapes here just copy it okay now when I just showed you what I did um, to create this wheel I actually made a mistake and I've recreated the wheel actually I just pulled this one from my library because I already made it but I had forgot to line up the bassinet before I elevated it and then rotated it I forgot to align it properly so it was kind of off center which isn't a huge deal but if you want it to be centered for making an archway above a doorway for example I know that we have alt placement now we can put doors anywhere we want but if you're creating a castle or a fortress or something you don't really want an off center door so keep that in mind before you even begin align that object exactly where you want it either in between the tile lines or on the tile lines wherever you prefer okay now back to what I was saying before if we want to create one going this direction and one going this direction all I did was I took this and swiveled it round with the comma or period key and kind of layer it on top of each other and now you've got them facing in two different directions like that then with wheels it's fun to just delete stuff and see what happens if you start deleting objects you can start creating shapes Okay, now let's say that was a shape that I wanted to go with. I kind of left them two separate. I would move that over a bit. So actually, let's do that now. Just draw a line and let's move this over by one tile. Cool. And let's say I wanted this elevated or lowered. I've left it green because I could hop over into live mode. And because these are already still on toggle select, just hold the alt key down again and just click on the remaining objects. Okay, now once I have them all selected, just shift click on one of the areas, tool, elevate, and you can move it up or down. Let's say I only wanted to move it down a little bit, I can do minus 0.5, and there you go, it moves it all around. And so sometimes I'll even leave it green like this and then go back over into build mode and then test it out maybe with some other objects I'm working with and then think, okay, actually I want it to be a little higher, I can jump back over into live mode and I don't have to select them all again, they're already still green. So that's a great feature. Now these arches here are made with the gargoyles from Vampire, from the Vampire's pack. I just made them bigger and this is what the circle looked like. And I did the same thing where I mirror imaged it on either side and just deleted some of the objects. And you can see how it starts to create this really cool curved arch shape. And then I elevated them all on top of each other. Now this was before the latest toolmod update. So I couldn't toggle select like this and elevate them all at the same time. I had to elevate each individual piece, which took hours to create these but now thanks to the updates with the tool mod it really only takes 10 minutes for me to rotate an object straight and then rotate an angled version so you can come up with some really cool stuff and if you have a look in my library you can see I have tons and tons of rotated objects and I love saving them as rooms because I can always use them at a later date for a different project okay now that I've shown you how I create these simple circles I will now do a speed build demonstration of how you can turn those circles into these individually unique ethereal elven looking arches. Okay, now normally I take notes before I start recording my audio voiceover to speed build, but you know what? I am too tired to work on any sort of notes. So I'm just going to wing it and hope for the best. So as you can see here, I've rotated the bathtubs from Get Famous because they have these really cool uh, swan wings on the side. And I thought that they added to the arch shape really well. And then here I am just taking some base game arches and making them bigger and elevating them. Although I didn't realize till I'd already created it that the oversized arches above the normal size one actually make it impossible for your sim to walk underneath. Now I've oversized door archways before and my sims have been able to walk through. So I don't know if this is a recent thing or it's always been that way, but I didn't realize till after I had built it. So. Oh well, so you can teleport through it or maybe you guys can figure out a way or you can delete those oversized doors and replace it maybe with something else. But um, I left it that way because I like the design too much. And then because like I mentioned, this was before the toggle select feature of the tool mod, I did this little trick where I created a second floor, delete the floor underneath, lower the room to hover at a height that I want the arch to be at or that I wanted to be the rotated objects at rather and then I deleted that floor um, and moved a room underneath it and that kind of helped me elevate it to the height that I wanted in a quicker way than individually lifting up every object if that made any sense. Um, so that's what I did before the toggle select feature was a really cool addition to the tool mod. And then um, in the background, you can see I've got just a bunch of rotated objects because like I said, I keep them all in my library. And then 
that way in the future when I'm creating something I can think oh I've already rotated all of these things that would look really good and a lot of times I don't know how an object is going to look once it's rotated so it's kind of a fun thing to do just when I'm super tired which is a lot and I can just like I don't know, stream Netflix and just rotate objects mindlessly. And then these really cool shapes start to form. And I think, oh, this would be really cool for a medieval castle or a fairy castle or all kinds of things. And so I'm just playing around with the different sizes and mirror imaging um, parts of the rotated baby bassinets that I had already created and trying to align them. And so I made some larger wheels on the sides as well as the smaller ones on the center just to give it a smoother look so that it would hide the wooden part of the bassinet and just like look like one flowing piece of fabric over them. And that took me a while because I kept changing my mind. Another thing to keep in mind too is that there's a huge glitch in the game at the moment. It's been this way for a while where sometimes when you make changes to rooms like you build a wall, delete a floor, while an object is elevated, it will actually delete all the objects that have been elevated. But Twisted Mexi, being the incredible modder that he is, he also created an expandable build by catalogue. I can't remember the exact name. I'll put the link in the description below. And it has a special feature in it where you bring up the cheat box and type in bb.protect and it will prevent anything from being deleted when you add walls, delete walls, add floors, delete floors. But the undo feature doesn't work so if you play something and you're like oh I don't like how I did that um, you won't be able to undo it but it is a really great thing to have and I really hope that the Sims team fix all of these glitches that we've been experiencing in build mode I know for me I've been losing floors in a lot of builds I actually have a huge Japanese palace that I built for a Halloween collaboration and I haven't been able to post it because the floor has disappeared on the second level, which is really frustrating. So I can't put any of the interior decorating furniture pieces. So I'm waiting. I'm just waiting for that. And I'm going to try and I've tried so many different things that people on Twitter, you guys have given me advice on what to do and great advice. Just for some reason, nothing seems to be working. Um, so here I just added a lantern or not a lantern a lamp from realm of magic and elevated it above because in night mode it has this really nice glow to it and then as you can see i'm adding wands there are debug wands from realm of magic and i just rotated them upright the thing i didn't realize when i made them though is that the footprint that green um the green grid behind it the footprint is so huge that it kind of gets in the way when you're using it against a wall. Like let's say you wanted to add this archway to a castle or a build that you're working on. If you have any objects that are close to where I put the wands, the wands footprint kind of hogs the whole space. And so if you try and click on the object behind it, it won't let you. You have to move the wands in order to change anything. So that's a bit annoying and I apologize, but I really just love the way that it looked. It, had, it just had this like really tall tower feel to it, like Lord of the Rings type of look. And I really liked it, so I didn't want to change it. I think if I had the energy, I might come up with a better design for that archway so that it could actually be usable. But again, like I said, you guys can tweak it and change it and delete the oversized doorways to make it, um, to make it usable. But because I made it for magical sims, I figured they can just teleport through it anyway. And then I'm just adding some light around the archway. See, that's what it looks like when it's glowing in the dark. And then, of course, I always save everything as a room just in case. I mean, the game hasn't crashed on me too many times, but there have been a couple times when I'm in the middle of creating something and it just crashes. And we all know that that's devastating. Okay, now this part that I'm doing here, I actually did today and it only took 30 minutes, but I wanted to create some additional arches to give you some ideas of how you can reshape the same wheel into lots of different variations. So one wheel that takes you 10 minutes to create can end up giving you lots of architectural details for different kinds of builds. Now, as you can see here, I had saved these partial rotate, I had saved these rotated at an angle um, versions of the wheel, but they weren't quite centered where I wanted them when I tried to 
merge them together. So I use the toggle select feature and if you just click on the ground a little bit it'll nudge it over to the area that you want it. It's a really handy feature because if you try and just move an entire room of those rotated objects you can only move them along the grid line. So if you want it to, if you want all those objects to kind of sit in between tiles, then you can't really do that just by moving around the room in build mode. So it's really helpful to have that toggle move feature. And then here, I'm just adding a different variation. This is a really 3D version of a doorway arch. And I'm using the same architectural details using the debug columns from Realm of Magic and the little lights they have these crystal lights with a uh, metallic rim around it and I just elevated them to create a sort of rounded shape on top just to top off that column and then the debug glow like I don't know what they are I call them light flares but they come in teal pink and orange and I use the teal ones because I thought that went with the white and to make that really pointed top piece I just used two bassinets just to give it that really spiky look to it because a lot of times like the elven arch design has that very high peak at the top and then I used uh, I think it's from Romantic Gardens I used these fountains and just sized them down and I like those versions of the fountains because you can size them down and the water sizes down with it a lot of times with any kind of water feature objects Normally, if you size them down, the water stays, stays the same size, and so that can, you know, not look very cool. But these ones, the water goes down with it. And then I used the lamps from Get Famous, the medieval looking ones with fire, and I sized them down tiny to create my own torches using a rooftop piece as these kind of candelabras and then here I am because I had made so many massive looking arches I wanted to make a small version for a tall wall but something you can use around regular sized doorways and windows and the two massive columns that I created I thought those would be cool as maybe like a skinny tower top I mean you can always put a roof around it if you want um, but I just thought I'd make some architectural details just to show you how you can incorporate the same objects that I used for the arches in different ways to add 3D effects to the builds that you're creating. All of this took 30 minutes and total to create all of these kind of arches would probably take me about, now with the new features of the tool mod, probably like two, anywhere from two to four hours to make all this variety of arches. So the tool mod can, once you get the hang of it, the tool mod can actually make things a lot quicker and and give you these really amazing custom 3D shapes. I will make this entire room available in the gallery if you just want to have them all together but for some of you with maybe slower computers I also have them posted individually. I hope you liked this video. If you have any suggestions on some architectural details you'd like me to create like I don't know like for a medieval castle for something sci-fi anything just let me know in the comments below. If you like this video be sure to give it an encouraging thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell to be notified about fresh content and as always I love you guys tons and tons. Bye.